Hi everyone, welcome to this edition of TM Johnson Outdoors. This weekend, Michelle and I are heading to the Boundary Waters for our 23rd anniversary. Stay tuned. Our first stop is Paragas to grab our canoe and paddles and permit. The canoe is on. These guys were very helpful and I would definitely use them again and I would recommend them. And also, we ended up getting 10% off at the outlet store when we were doing some shopping. Paragas, check them out. So our first night here up in the Boundary Waters area, we're not in the Boundary Waters yet, but up here in the area, we're gonna stay at Fenske Campground. It's Thursday night, uh, so we're gonna stay here tonight, and then we're gonna head to our entry point tomorrow, which is on Slim Lake. We're at our campsite, and we have two bathrooms across the road from us. We are in site 10, and it looks like a tent only site. Fenske Lake. Looks like a little fishing pier, and then over here they have a beach. Nice little campground. And then some kind of resort. So last year when we were on SAG, we uh, decided to sleep in the car between the heat and then rolling the windows down and the mosquitoes getting in it was a nightmare so this time we took the extra 15 minutes to set the tent up which i think is going to be a good idea and we'll put the link to that trip in the down in the description Fresh raspberries. Good morning. We are leaving Fenske for the Boundary Waters. Slim Lake entry point. Here we go. Entry point number six. So our plan is to paddle this portage, portage, and portage and get to Kinu. Just for the fact that it has one campsite on the lake. If that one's taken, we'll go here. Uh, hook shows us and then go into rice. And then if we have to, slim. There are some vehicles here, so we'll see what it looks like when we get to the lake.
So we made one trip already. This is our second trip and the trail is in pretty good shape. Once you hit this creek, you know you're almost there. I'll show you in a second. campsite update so when we pulled into the when we landed our boat uh, a couple was coming off the lake already and I kind of asked them where they came from and they told me that they were at the site next to the portage I'll show you on the map here in a second and uh, they also said a couple groups went kind of in where we wanted to go and they kind of day tripped in there and kind of the bugs were kind of bad because there wasn't much wind back there so we might have a change of plans. Um, we're thinking about this campsite. It's the second one to the portage. We went to the left out of the boat landing and there was a couple groups set up down there. So we came all the way across this part of the lake and found this spot. It's got a nice view of the lake. Uh, the breeze has picked up a couple times since we've been in here and it felt really nice. So that's a plus. Nice little fire pit overlooking the lake. And there's a couple nice little spots here to put the tents. But anyway, I'll show you what we're looking here on the map. So we came out here and went this way to start with. That was taken, that was taken. The group that we talked to said that they were at this site here. Right now we're at this one. So we're gonna go kind of paddle up here and take a look at this spot and see what it looks like. And I have a feeling we might be coming back to this little spot. Nice little island right there it shows. That's this little island here. And uh, Nice little cove, kind of, if you will. But I really like the view of the lake from here. So anyway, that's where we're at. We can always go into those little lakes as a day trip. And uh, so that might be the plan if we end up taking this spot. But uh, I'm going to go get back in the canoe. We're going to go look at this other one. And uh, we'll see what we decide. So we're at that next site and I think we've already agreed since we've only been here for a couple minutes that the other one was better than this one. A um, couple of nice little tent spots but not much of a view. I'll show you that here in a second. Um, nice little fire ring but I think we just agree that the other one is better. There's one tent pad spot down towards the lake. There's your fire ring. Some good bench seating. And maybe another spot to put a tent. 
It looks like people put some pine balls down to level it out. Um, a view to the north, if you will. That's where the wind is coming from. You can probably pick, hear it on their phone. And then we came from this way to get here. So we're going to have a decision to make. The decision has been made. We're going to the other one. Back to the first one. However, a plus for this spot is a nice little sandy landing area. I mean, the view isn't bad. But I think we just like the other one better. And plus, no, just right around the corner here is where the portage is to those other lakes. So here's what we do with our campsite. Got our food and stuff next to the cooking grate. Got a little canopy going here. Hammock in the background. A little two-person tent. We'll see what's in store. Good morning. It is Saturday morning on Slim Lake. Michelle is still sleeping. So I think I'm going to go and try to do some fishing. Just me pouting. You ever see those memes where the the wife is sitting there and the husband's just kind of pouty looking and she's like, I bet you she's thinking about his girlfriend. But then it says, I can't believe I missed that flock of mallards that came into my decoys. Well, that's how I feel. Because my fishing rod is currently in the bottom of Slim Lake. Got a bite. And I was monkeying around with my paddle, and I don't know if I let go of the wrong thing, or if it just slipped out of my hand. And uh, I went back out with the other fishing rod trying to snag it, and I haven't snagged it yet. But that's going to be my mission now, to try to snag my fishing rod. I kind of know where it's at. It's in 15 feet of water, so I'm just not going to go diving for it. But I hope I'm not pouty all weekend. Team Johnson Outdoors. Small mouth. Twenty six feet of water here. Smally. Oh, he got off. A couple times now, I've actually felt like I caught something where I thought maybe it was my rod. 
just because it hasn't given me uh, any fight back. Still no luck. I've been catching all those smallies on the jig and that Ned BLT Crust City made by Rapala. And so now I put on a spinner and I'm still going to use that uh, Crust City BLT made by Rapala on my spinners. So we're going to see how that goes. Fish on. Probably not a smallie. And it was just a flash of lightning, so I think I'm going to catch this guy and get out of here. Alright, I'm going to head back to camp. Five minutes too long. This is evidence of how quickly the forecast can change. When we looked at the weather for the weekend, there was 0% chance of rain across the board all four days. This morning I updated the forecast on the Garmin and it showed 60% chance of rain at 6 o'clock. And now all of a sudden it's a 70% chance of rain at noon and it's not even noon. Made it off the lake about five minutes too late. So this is our first time using bear barrels. Bear vaults. And so why do we have to use these? 
the U.S. Forest Service implemented restrictions on how you handle your food in the wilderness to reduce the bear-human interactions that have been increasing over the last couple of years. You either need to hang your food, uh, which is hard to do correctly uh, and relies on having a good tree to hang your food, um, or they need to be in a grizzly agency approved um, container, which the Bear Vault is. These are the Bear Vault 500s, and they are supposed to hold seven days worth of food um, for one person in each barrel. You are also required to have like your shampoo, toothpaste, anything smelly um, in there as well, which you can see. Clorox wipes, uh, probably some toothpaste and some alcoholic beverages as well. <laughs> easy, easy. All right, and you like them so far? I like them. They double as stools and tables, and they fit in a backpack um, or on top of a backpack. So I feel like they're much more multi-purpose than if we continue to hang our food like we've done in the past. Bear vaults. I took a stick and wrapped it with that cord and tied it. And then using a couple rocks, I use it as a tent stake to hold this down. Because I didn't have any more tent stakes. I did the same over here. It's actually working out pretty good. It's three o'clock and the wind has died down considerably. A little bit of rain still, some thunder, but uh, still kind of an icky day. Yesterday we didn't do much. We just kind of set up and napped all day. Today is kind of looking like the same. Which is fine because we're on vacation. Not only are we in the Barney Waters, but we're on vacation. So it's okay to relax. Since I won the first game of cribbage, now we're gonna play phase 10. Now this is Michelle's jam. I'm gonna get my hinder beat in here pretty quick. Phase 10 champion. I didn't say champion. Oh, phase 10 winner. Round one. Spaghetti was delicious. Well, the rain has finally stopped. It's like six o'clock. In some of my clips, you might hear some other voices. Well, uh, while it was raining, a group of four ladies came paddling through <clears throat> and uh, we housed them at our campsite. 
Oh, it was starting to lightning and thunder, and they got a little nervous, and so we told them to come on in. So anyway, we have camp visitors for the night. So you might have noticed a couple extra tents there and the canoes behind me. Sunday morning. Some pancakes, some hash browns, and we found these Hormel pre-cooked bacon strips. We had some the other day, and they were and they were delicious. And then again, it's bacon. Bacon bits are good, as far as I'm concerned. Those clouds almost look like mountains over there. And our friends are still here. I think our plan is going to be, after breakfast here, pack up some stuff for lunch and head into a couple of those back lakes. Just do a little bit of exploring, but we'll see. Before you enter the Boundary Waters, you're required to watch a video. Kind of like on the etiquette of Boundary Waters. And one of them is, do not take birch bark from a standing birch tree. I mean, it's right in the video. How can you not... Whatever. It's just kind of disappointing some people like i said i mean it's right in the video and this is what happens so I'll update on our visitors here so they're still here tents and the canoes <clears throat> you know it's 10 o'clock in the morning so I would have thought, if that had been me asking for help, I'd have been out of here by 7. So now they went exploring to see if there's any campsites available. But anyway, we're just being uh, friendly people. So that's the update. Update. 10.45, they found a campsite. And they're gone. So our visitors have left. Um, they finally went down the lake. They kind of scouted a campsite after we saw a couple of paddlers leave that area. And uh, now they're on their way. It was nice to meet them. Four ladies, I can't remember all their names. Bo, Barb, Julie, and the fourth one I can't remember. But anyway, um, Michelle and I are back to being alone. Yeah, I think now we're gonna go head out to one of these lakes and do some exploring. We are right here. So we're gonna pedal up past this campsite, go into this portage, 75 rods, into Rice Lake. We'll see what this looks like. And uh, we'll see how it is if we decide we're gonna come into here or not. But it's gonna give us something to do today. Kind of a rocky little portage here to start. We're going to go right through there. A little bit of an ankle breaker here. Lake.
not much to Rice Lake. I think we paddled around the whole thing and we're already ready to head back into Slim. We're not going to portage into Hook or Kinu. We're just going to head back. Nice little camp area though. Just right over Michelle's head here. So Rice is kind of a shallow looking weedy lake, mucky lake. DNR report said that there's hybrid sunfish in here and I couldn't find any. Um, but anyway, like I said, we're heading back. Back to Slim. I'm looking for some walleyes or even a couple small smallies because I'm going to cook at least something for supper tonight. Went out fishing there for a little bit and caught that one smallie, but then it started to rain. So I headed back in. Maybe we'll try it again this evening, but still no walleyes. Sunday night, our final night. Another peaceful night on Slim Lake. All right, we're all packed up and ready to head back home. Not much to this lake, not much for fishing, but for relaxing, it's an A plus for me. 
As always, thanks for watching. Stay healthy, and we'll see you guys next time. I might have got that.